Hi everyone, my name is Marius Varga, and I'm here to present the paper called Multi-Objective Population Visualization with Geons. This paper was written in collaboration with Dr. Sven Gold and Dr. David Walker. So uh, we start with a short introduction to many objective visualization and the challenges that it presents, uh, followed up by an introduction to visual objects uh, called geon-based object, GBOs for short. I'll explain more of that uh, later on. We'll cover the mapping process of a many objective data set to the GBOs themselves. Uh, next, we look at our pilot study methodology and findings, and we're going to discuss a bit uh, uh, what we found out. And finally, we look at the future work and what's next for our visualization approach based on uh, geons. Um, an effective many objective visualization is quite difficult to achieve due to the high number of objectives and solutions. So um, typically, this problem is solved through dimensionality reduction, employing approaches like principal component analysis or other methods, basically reducing the problem to two or three dimensions displayed either as scatter plots or other techniques uh, used for visualization. Our approach is to encapsulate all the objectives for one solution into one easily recognizable visual object called geon-based object, GBO, as I said earlier. Uh, and we use this object to display, all, or we use this to display all the GBOs in a virtual space for easy analysis and comparison between those visual objects. So uh, before we start, in order to understand what a GBO is, we need to understand what geons are. So full name is geometrical ions, and they are symmetrical volumes without sharp, sharp concavities characterized by axis and the cross-section typically at the right angle of, of the axis. Uh, the, the, they're based on the Biderman's recognition by components theory. Uh, uh, and uh, basically, the unique combination of geons and their positional relation to each other creates a visual object that we call a, a geon-based object. And that can be easily recognized as well. So for the geons this, themselves, we use four attributes uh, to create 36 unique shapes. So in total, 36 uh, 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 geons. These attributes are basically edge, symmetry, size, and axis. And uh, um, they're basically the key to what geons are. So if we're looking the, on the slide, uh, we have a cylinder and a cube board here on the left-hand side of, of, the, of the image. Uh, the only difference between them in this case is the edge. A cuboid will have four edges, uh, but a cylinder is similar to a cuboid, but with a lot more edges turning it into a round shape. Uh, and simil similarly, uh, if we take the symmetry, we look at uh, any of these objects on the screen, if, if we split them in two, basically uh, right in the middle, we, we can see they're symmetrical. The, some of the geons are not symmetrical uh, from one half to another. Um, the other element in here is the size. And the size is something that we can uh, compare, for example, between the cuboid and the diamond in the image. So when we're talking about the size, we talk about the size at the top, center, element, and bottom uh, size. So uh, this cuboid can be easily transferred into a diamond shape by shrinking the top and the bottom element and increasing the size of the mid element, and that gives us the diamond. Uh, and the last one, the axis, it can be easily seen here in this curved cylinder, which is very similar to the uh, straight cylinder. The only difference is the axis themselves. Um, all these three cylinder cuboid and diamond have a straight axis except the curved cylinder. So a combination of all these attributes will create these 36 unique uh, geons. So uh, the unique combination of these geons and the positional relation to each other creates a visual object, the GBO. 
the representation of this object would be a structural, this structural description of the components that form that object, i.e. geons, and their relationship to each other. These relationships include the relative size of the components, orientation, and the locus of their attachment. So in our approach, we have a main geon that acts as the body of the, uh, of the object and the rest of the geons are attached to the main geon or to other geons already attached to the, uh, to the main geon. So for a data set with five objectives in this case, uh, basically uh, the representation of one solution looks like the GB on the screen. Uh, the locus of each uh, uh, geon is assigned where we process the data and it stays consistent for all the solutions throughout the visualization. So if we look at the screen, our geon has a main body. In this case, is, is this, uh, this element right here. And that represents the average rank in our case for this particular solution. Uh, and the normal process is to normalize uh, uh, each objective score, and we split it into four quantiles. Uh, so each geon, a geon will represent the quantile in this case. So if we look here uh, in the image, we have objective one, two, three, and five representing the same quantile. So they're, they're part of the same uh, uh, group. Uh, if we look at object, objective four, it represents a completely different quantile. Uh, so uh, that the shape is completely different. And yet again, the average, average rank belongs to a different uh, uh, quantile and its shape is different from the, object, the other objectives. So um, in our case, we chose only four quantiles, but there's no limit to this uh, basically on how many uh, we can use. But for this particular uh, pilot uh, study, we use only four quantiles. Uh, in terms of positioning the data in the virtual environment, we could have used random distribution or basically a grid pattern, but we decided to generate a set of 2D coordinates generated by using a PCA. Uh, the values are distributed using polar coordinates uh, with 0, 0 sitting at the center uh, of a set of concentric circles. You can see in both the images, the center point and the distribution of the object. This creates a set of clusters for similar GBOs with slight differences in the objectives. Uh, um, if we look at this small cluster right here on the image, basically, uh, we can see even with this resolution that the geons uh, objective one and two on the side, basically, are different from objective three at the top. So uh, even from this far, we can see the difference between objective three and the other two objectives. Now, one of the issues with this, uh, the clustering can create this overlapping effect, especially in this image, you can see a lot of uh, geons being overlapped. Uh, this creates a problem as this, the user or the participant struggles to identify different GBOs uh, especially when they have similar uh, structural uh, representation. So in order to overcome this issue, we introduce a value that controls the distance between GBOs, enabling the user to increase or decrease the space between the GBOs. Uh, in terms of the overall process, uh, how this works, basically uh, uh, we start with loading the data set uh, in here and what we do, we calculate the average rank uh, for each solution. And then we run the PCA for, uh, uh, for each uh, solution in order to generate a set of 2D coordinates for placement in the virtual environment. Uh, and then we generate the geons themselves, we represent the objective score. And then we assemble this into the visual object, which is the GBO. And then those GBOs, or to the majority, all hundred of them in this case, are being displayed in the virtual environment. Um, we added uh, uh, an interactive element to it. And this was needed in order to enable the participants to query each geo value and range in this, in, in this case. 
we simply click on the geon and the small display will, will show up where in this case, you can see in the image, it uh, shows us the range between, in these cases, between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5. Uh, that's for the objective one. And that's the value that we, the normalized data holds. Uh, so uh, the user will be able to, to pull this information out and compare it between uh, various geons. So if there's a geon next to it, you can click on that and you get the same uh, information. Uh, one of the other elements uh, that we added, it was important to add, is to enable participants to move around the environment for a better point of view. Uh, for that, we use the flying model, which is typically typical of the first person controller found in gaming environments, but with the additional benefit that the users uh, can explore the space freely for, uh, from, by flying and not by being limited to the grounded uh, level, uh, level ground locomotion. Uh, <clears throat> for our pilot study, we had six participants and the goal was to understand how experts interact with our novel tool. Uh, we employed a mixed approach integrating uh, a quantitative post-experiment tool with a qualitative, uh, 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 basically, uh, approach during the experiment. Uh, so for our qualitative approach, we are using the think aloud method, where users are initially encouraged to verbalize the thought process during a given set of tasks. Uh, we employ the broad bottom-up approach where the focus is on the task analysis. Uh, the goal is to observe the expert's con cognitive process during the execution of a set of a simple task and observe their interaction with the tool during that process. Uh, this will allow, allow, the, allow us to refine the process needed for visualizing and exploring the data using basically our method. For the quantitative aspect, we use an adapted version of the post-study system usability questionnaire, PSS UQ, with an additional four open questions to, to, to gather qualita qualitative uh, feedback uh, on, on this particular application. Uh, the PSS UQ is a validated and established usability questionnaire developed by IBM to measure general usability of the developed software. Uh, it uses uh, a Likert scale to quantify the overall usability of a given soft software artifact based on the user current experience. Uh, in terms of uh, basically findings, uh, overall our approach was well received with majority of the participants declaring that this approach can be beneficial uh, in their field. I know it, it is a small sample, uh, but it's still significant. Our observation uh, suggests that those participants that managed to build a coherent um, mental model of Geon's representations had no issues performing the given task. Uh, the participants who lacked full understanding of the mapping process from data to Geon made some assumptions based on their previous experience with other visualization uh, applications. Uh, due to the novelty of the approach, some of the participants struggled to remember the range represented by each uh, geon. So from our observation and feedback received, it was a combination of new information that participants had to remember in the shape of the mapping process, uh, plus navigation challenges and the interaction metaphor. They all contributed to basically a high cognitive load uh, for, for some of the participants. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, some of the participants struggled with the navigation uh, uh, as they were not familiar with the metaphor of, of, of first person controller, uh, especially uh, the participants that they never uh, use a joystick uh, to, 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 to navigate uh, or a gaming environment. They wanted a more focused approach uh, also for a, a relative point of interest that can be chosen and the ability to zoom on that particular area. Uh, the flying metaphor was well received, but point of interest is necessary when you want to study uh, certain elements. The main issue that we have uh, due to the pandemic, uh, some of the testing happened over uh, 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 remote access, which was a significant lag, making navigation difficult. 
and other words done in the browser, which also introduces a, a significant lag, some, something that we want to rectify in the, uh, in the next study. Uh, in terms of future work, uh, we plan to extend our pilot study uh, that was mainly focused on experts at this point in time to include a high number of participants, including non-experts. Uh, we, also, we also plan to include a mapping process as part of the application itself in order to help participants to gradually build a mental model of the geon-based uh, objects and the solution that they, represents, uh, that they represent. Uh, this is important because uh, previously uh, all the all the mapping process was explained uh, by uh, uh, super, the, the person who supervised the experiments, uh, which uh, led to some of the participants not understanding fully the mapping process. Uh, an iteration of the interaction metaphor is needed also in order to allow for better controls and minimize the participants' cognitive load when exploring the virtual space. Um, and uh, another area they would like to explore is the GBO's positioning in the virtual space. Uh, is there a better solution to the current coordinates generation using PCA? Uh, approach, or can we uh, can we put some uh, come up with something better in order to uh, make those uh, the, the, those clusters a bit more visible? Uh, and finally, uh, uh, the problem domain uh, we would like to explore it a bit more. Uh, what happens when we use a higher number of objectives? For example, we used uh, three and five objectives for current iteration. Uh, what happens if we use uh, 10, for example, 10 objectives? Uh, are the GBOs becoming too complex for that? Uh, is, is, is there a significant, uh, 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 I should say, uh, a significant uh, challenge for the participant to recognize a, a higher number of objectives on the GBO? The, all these questions need to be answered, obviously, uh, through another uh, study. The same goes for the number of solutions. Currently, we are using a maximum of 100 solutions uh, for, for this study. Uh, but what happens if we have 1,000 solutions or even uh, 10,000? Obviously, we won't be able to display all the GBOs at once. Uh, uh, and what would be the best approach? How do we uh, tackle that sheer volume of information uh, uh, that will basically uh, um, could overwhelm uh, any, any user? Uh, so uh, that's it for me. I'll stop here. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, for listening. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to, to put them across. Thank you again.